Harry Simeon is with me in the studio now. Arsenal fan, you're perfect for this conversation. Um, Sam Morgan believes that people are waiting for Arsenal to fail, but Harry, we're friends now. We work together often. <laughs> I even feel that there's an element of that from the fans' perspective as well. It's not It's not um, a, a wanting Arsenal to fail or waiting for Arsenal to fail. What it is, I think, when you start a season with one expectation and then you get this deep into it and you realise that actually you could achieve something that was unthinkable when you set out... Mm this natural panic sets in and this nervousness and there's a part of you that wants to protect yourself i'm speaking for myself now like i want to protect myself from the disappointment i don't want to come to the end of the season and if arsenal narrowly miss out be upset and be angry and be disappointed because regardless of what happens in the last 10 games arsenal have had an incredible season and that shouldn't be lost in the conversation so I don't think I think people outside are waiting for Arsenal to fail. I think people have enjoyed watching Arsenal fail over the last few years, uh, particularly when they started missing out on the top four. You know, look how far this club have fallen, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, they used to celebrate finishing in the top four, and now they can't even do that. People enjoyed that, and I think that narrative is still there from rival fans. I think there are a lot of rival fans that. Uh, have watched their clubs go and spend big money and, and sort of try and bring in blockbuster managers and it's not really worked. And there are Arsenal who hired Mikel Arteta, who people were pointing and laughing at. Um, Rory Jennings was in this very seat and he called him a championship level manager. So people were waiting and expecting for this whole Arteta project to crash and burn. And Mikel Arteta is 10 games away from achieving something that is unbelievable winning the Premier League with what would be the youngest ever squad to do it so yeah I, I think people are waiting for Arsenal to fail they might fail because you know there are so many factors you have to put into this really worried about some of the defensive injuries at the moment you know a lot of talk about William Saliba maybe needing surgery what's going to happen there can they manage him through until the end of the season or not um it that issue has been sort of compounded by the fact that Tommy Asu's out, which means you can't put him at right back and put Ben White back in at centre back. So mm -hmm. that gives Arsenal a problem. And everybody's looking at Rob Holding now, a player who for years, unfortunately, has shown that he's not up to the standard. He's going to be relied upon now in some really big games. So there is a nervousness there as well. Mm, such a nice guy. Oh, the Rob best, the best. But he's just not... William Saliba's got this incredible ability to bring the ball out of the back line. He's got unbelievable pace, which allows Arsenal to play with a high line and squeeze teams in their own half, which is a big part of their style of play. The minute you ask Rob Holding to do that, he's a little bit lost. And you might get away with it in some of the home games against weaker mm -hmm. opposition, with all due respect. But you're not getting away with that at Anfield. You're not getting away with that at the Etihad and, and probably at St. James's Park as well. Mm -hmm. Um do Manchester City stop Arsenal, Harry? Would you still be concerned with playing them again? If Arsenal were being chased down by any other side over the last 10 years, maybe with the exception of Liverpool, who obviously have shown that level of performance as well, I wouldn't be concerned because I'd trust in this Arsenal side to, to do enough and to get over the line. But I genuinely look at Manchester City's games and think if they click, which there's no guarantee they do, but if they do, they could win all 10. You mentioned um, injuries as well. Yeah. Oh, oh well, yeah, injuries as well. Um, this season and where you are at this point in the season, it's a dangerous time. Um, thinking about Jesus coming back though, there's pressure on him, isn't there, to provide goals. Um, but if you hadn't lost him earlier in the season, would Arsenal be further ahead in the table? Possibly, possibly. Um, Eddie Nketiah did a fantastic job, to be fair to he him. Really he, did. he really, really did. Mm. Um, he's not the same type of player as, as Gabriel Jesus. He's not as impactful in the build-up and what he was asked to do in Jesus's absence was do a lot of things that come unnaturally to him. Eddie Nketiah is a penalty box player, comes alive in and around the six-yard box. You take him out of that and you ask him to run channels left and right and drop deep. That's not really his game. Jesus does that for fun. Mm. But where Jesus has struggled a little bit this season is in front of goal. He hasn't scored for ages. Um, obviously, he's back from injury now. He's, he's made a few appearances, not always played full game so he's getting back into the swing of things but if he can find the goal for example this weekend and and really get himself on a bit of a run on a bit of a streak that could be massive in terms of Arsenal getting over the line yeah I mean you would love to see it as well I'm oh sure after, after the season he's had you know he came in started brilliantly and then got that horrendous injury mm. um whilst on world cup duty and and he's missed a massive chunk of the season I'd love to see him seal it um, Bukaya Saka as well I mean just what a, a young star he's the star boy the poster boy 
how he represents himself on and off the pitch. He's just a lovable guy and he's been Arsenal's most important player this season as well. What have you made of him? He's been un unreal. Unreal. Um, not just him, though. I think you have to give props to Martin Odegaard, who's uh, really upped his outputs, goals and assists. Um, always looked great on the eye, Martin Odegaard, but he's really taken his game to another level. Martinelli, too. And the combination of those three has compensated for the fact that Arsenal didn't have a centre forward for a little while and, and helped Arsenal even when Enketia picked up his injury as well. So those lot as a group have come together and, and dealt with the absence mm. of Gabriel Jesus, but also the lack of goals from Jesus before, obviously, the World Cup, where he went on a run of, I think, 10 or 11 games, if I'm not mistaken, without scoring a goal in the Premier League, which for a centre forward at the team sitting top of the pile is, is not exactly great. I'm, I'm just looking ahead um, to your fixtures mm. and you've mentioned it already on the show like the next run of games are all to be treated as cup final. You've got Leeds, yep. then it's Liverpool, then it's West Ham, Manchester City on the 26th of April and then Chelsea after that on the 29th of April. It's a lot to go that you can understand how hard it will be if you do start to drop points if that does start to happen but if you continue winning you're that many points cleared it's actually quite incredible yeah you, you all you arsenal have to do is get the same or at least you know a few if it's a few points less than manchester city no problem as long as manchester city don't end up with five more points than arsenal then it's absolutely fine because you know arsenal have done so well up until this point to get themselves in that position for example we're speaking on Friday. If Liverpool go and get a draw at Manchester City on Saturday and Arsenal beat Leeds United, then Arsenal go to Anfield next week, not needing to beat Liverpool, uh -huh. just needing to make sure that they limit the damage. And then there's a pressure off element, but they can go into that game with that just one desire to win it anyway, not having to win it. You yeah, know, well, it that leeway. if you go there and you get beat, but Liverpool have taken two points off of Manchester City or out of their potential yeah. total, then that means if you go to Anfield and lose, which could be dressed up as a disaster, actually you've only lost one point of your cushion mm. and you've got that fixture out of the way. With every passing week, the games are getting less and less and, and Arsenal are getting closer and closer. But it's so important that you know they do take advantage of any situations um, in terms of Manchester City slipping up. And, and they could, you know, they could. But um, yeah, there's, there's too many twists and turns. If Arsenal don't win the league this season, is mm. it failure? No, absolutely not. If Arsenal finish second, that is an incredible achievement. It will feel like failure at the time mm -hmm. and it will it will hurt and it will cut deep and you know there will be disappointment. But knowing how invested the Arsenal fans have been this season, how much they've enjoyed the ride, I know that whatever happens on the last day, the Emirates Stadium will be up on its feet applauding that team, the manager, for everything they've done this season. But if we could cap it off with uh, with the big one, that would be unbelievable. Remember hashtag Arteta out yeah. every yeah, yeah. single week yeah. they played. You know, what a turnaround it's been. Uh, Harry, thank you. You're listening to the playlist here on TalkSport 2. With